G'day folks. Some of you may get a feeling of deja vu as you look at this video and think, haven't I seen this information before? Uh, if you were quick, you may have, because I've put up a video with this, inf this same information in it, uh, which I've now taken down. The reason I've taken it down and redone the information in this format is because my goal has always been to stick as close to the source material, like the law dictionaries, as possible. But sometimes in attempting to do that, you muddle the message or confuse the message because sometimes the law dictionaries themselves, I think, are muddled. So I looked at the, at the video after I'd uploaded it and I decided in the end that, it, that, that the points that I needed to make weren't being made clearly enough and were being lost in ancillary information that I was giving in attempting to stick as close to, as possible to the law dictionary definitions. So I'm going to, I've done it again here because I want to really be clear on hitting the important points. Uh, so those of you who are following the CDK issue will know that when it's discussed online, uh, three of the key roles that are mentioned are that of trustee, executor and administrator. So I want to go through and try and give you some clarity on those three roles and, and exactly what they are. Before we do that though, a foundational piece of information and really nearly all the videos on this channel, well not all, but those in the playlists are definitely foundational uh, and I suggest if you really want to understand this issue, you need to look at them all. But one absolutely key foundational issue that you will need to have examined and accepted in order for any of this to make sense is to be found in this video here, name part 11, a dead man's name. And specifically from that video, the information you need to look at is from the law dictionary here on name and the section that you see there highlighted, if you like, a man invests in his own name as executor. Now, on the basis of that part of this definition, we have concluded in the video I just showed you that the legal name is what's meant by in his own name and that if you are an investing as an executor in the legal name, then the legal name is a name identifying a deceased estate. I won't go into that any further here. Look at the other video if you, if you want to know more about that. Okay, but that is a foundational piece of information uh, that, that we're building on. So if, you don't, if you're not accepting of that, if you don't understand that, the rest of what we're about to discuss is probably going to be wasted on you. So let's take a look at trustee, executor and administrator. And the first thing I want to say about them is that they are all fiduciary roles. And a fiduciary role is a role where one party owes a duty of care to another. In all three cases, the duty of care is to beneficiaries. Now, as you see in the diagram there, a trustee is appointed by a trustee. And he is the trust and he is the fiduciary appointed in what's known as an inter vivos trust. Inter vivos means living, and the reason an inter vivos trust is referred to as a living trust is because the grantor or set law of the trust creates the trust while they're still alive. Now, this differs from an executor, but only in terms of the manner of appointment. So an executor is someone who is appointed by a will, and a will is a form of trustee. And the executor's appointment is over a deceased estate. So a will creates a deceased estate. The key difference there is that the party establishing that trust is called, instead of being called a grantor or set law, 
is called a testator and they don't establish it while they're living they establish it when they die so it is their death that establishes the deceased estate and a deceased estate is another form of trust now then we have the role of administrator which is also a fiduciary of a deceased estate but unlike an executor an administrator is appointed by letters of administration so as you see here the difference is this an executor and an administrator of, a, of an estate like a, as in a deceased estate are identical in respect of their duties and responsibilities to the estate and its beneficiaries the only difference between the two is in the manner of their appointment an executor is appointed by the testator which is the deceased in the will an administrator however is appointed by the probate court by letters of administration in circumstances where the deceased was intestate which means they died without having prepared a will or they did have a will but failed to nominate an executor in the will or did nominate an executor in the will but that executor is unable to to act either because and, and some of the reasons might be they're deceased they're unwilling to do it or perhaps they're incapacitated in some way so that is really the, the key differential between an executor and an administrator is in the manner of their appointment but when you see an executor or an administrator you have a deceased estate so someone is dead and you have a deceased estate which is a form of corporation so now we'll go to uh, the law dictionary definition I just want to show you how much information is in it uh, so I'll just scroll down here so you can see it is quite lengthy and this is why I have found it impossible in a short video to go through all the information in this definition and break it down for you uh, apart from that it's also uh, not put together in my opinion in the most logical format as it appears in this law dictionary and this the law dictionary I've drawn this from is Duvier's Law Dictionary 1856 revised 6th edition we will though now go to a couple of extracts from this law dictionary definition that I want to bring to your attention so the first is, is this here and this just confirms that an administrator is someone who's appointed when there's no will or, or when there is a will but no executor named in the will or an executor that is named in the will is not able to act and that con in, in contradistinction to that uh, the more general term executor refers to someone who's appointed in a will so as you see here in this first part executor de tibus who is one called an administrator to an intestate and just I put what you see there in blue is what I've inserted uh, to give a bit of clarity hopefully in case you don't know what an intestate is so an intestate is a decedent and a decedent is someone who's died an intestate is a decedent who has no will so clearly this law dictionary definition is confirming for us that someone who dies without a will has their estate administered by an administrator and then we come to the second part executor testamentarius or one appointed to the office by the last will of a testator the testator being the decedent which is someone who the, whoever's died 
And this is what is usually meant by the term, meaning the term executor. So the very technical term for an administrator would be executor to Tevis, and the very technical term for an executor would be executor testamentarius. But as they're telling us here, generally when people use the term executor, they're meaning an executor testamentarius, and when they use the term administrator, they're meaning executor to Tevis. Okay? Then we have this. Executors may be classed into general and special, instituted and substituted, rightful and executor to song taught, and executor to the tenor. What we're going... Th these are... So, it's general or special, instituted or substituted, rightful or executor to song taught, and executor to the tenor. We're going to look at the differences between a rightful and an executor to song taught. Again, from this law dictionary definition. So this is exactly as it appears. This is an extract from the definition, but what you see here is exactly as it appears, except where I've put something in blue to try and make a little clearer what's being talked about. So this is the two, the difference between a rightful and an executor to song taught. A rightful executor is one lawfully appointed by the testator, who is the deceased, by his will. Okay, so that's what a rightful executor is. Someone properly appointed in the will. Coming down from here on, I'm not going to highlight it, we'll just read what's in, in red. An executor to son taught, or of his own wrong, is one who, without lawful authority undertakes to act as executor of a person deceased. So an executor de son tort is someone who assumes the role of executor, but doesn't have a proper appointment to that role. As it goes on, to make him executor de son tort, the act of the party must be unlawful. And what they mean by unlawful is not properly appointed. And by asserting ownership, which means taking control and dealing with the assets of the estate. Going on, he is, meaning the executor de son taught, he is in general held responsible for all his acts when he does anything which might prejudice the estate and receives no advantage whatever in consequence of his assuming the office. He cannot sue a debtor of the estate, but may be sued generally as executor. What this is telling us is that an executor to sell taught has all the burdens of executorship and none of the benefits or privileges. The usurpation of an office or character cannot confer the rights and privileges of it, although it may charge the usurper with the duties and obligations annexed to it. On this principle, an executor to song taught is an executor only for the purpose of being sued, not for the purpose of suing. In point of form, he is sued as if he were a rightful executor. He is not denominated in the declaration executor to song taught of his own wrong. This is what I really want to focus on. <clears throat> when it says he is not denominated in the declaration, it's talking about a declaration where he is being sued, what it said in his previous sentence, when he is being sued as if he were a rightful executor. So because he's being sued as if he were a rightful executor, he is not denominated, which basically means noted or written as in the declaration, being the document suing, executor to taught. What does this mean? What it means is that someone who has acted as executor to son taught may not know they've acted as executor to son taught. And the fact that they intended no, no wrong or real, that they've acted perhaps out of error, 
and without malicious intention is immaterial. If they haven't been properly appointed, then they will be considered an executor de Sontor. But if they've assumed the role unintentionally, accidentally, by error, they will have no idea that they are an executor de Sontor. And what this sentence here is telling us is that they probably will never find out because no documentation will declare them to be acting in the capacity of executor de Sontor. So it's possible, and in fact I'm going to suggest this is exactly what's happened, that someone could act as executor de Sontor from the very beginning of their life, totally unaware that's what they were doing, live their entire life, a long and fruitful life, hopefully, and die having always acted as executor de son tort for a deceased estate without ever knowing that's what they were considered to be doing in the eyes of the law. So, if we go back to the knowledge we have from the definition in Anderson's Law Dictionary. We can see there that someone acting in the legal name, according to the Law Dictionary definition, is acting as an executor. What I'm suggesting to you is that the type of executor they're acting at as is executor de son tort. On what do I base that? Well, we have seen that to be an executor, you need to have been appointed properly in a will. If you are the deceased, did you ever complete a will? I say that you have not. Now, you may say, ah, but I have done a will. Yes, but you've done a will in the legal name, which is the name of a deceased estate. You have not done a will in your proper name, which is your Christian or given name. So, with respect to yourself, you have never done a will. Though if you have done a will, that will is in the legal name, and that legal name is the name of a deceased estate. So there is no will for the living man. If there is no will, then there can be no executor properly appointed from a will. And so if you are acting as an executor, the logical conclusion must be that you are acting as an executor de son tort, bearing all the liabilities and responsibilities of that role with none of the benefits or privileges. So folks, how do we relate all this back to the city KV theory that we're here to discuss? Well, we're going to take a quick look, a little, a quick recap of the key components of the city KV theory as it's discussed in online blogs. Uh, just before we do, the one thing we have, I believe, proven is that the legal name is a name identifying a deceased estate. And we've proven that via the definition of name in Anderson's Dictionary of Law. So that much of what's claimed about City K is true. The rest we still have to work our way through. But let's just have a look at what we've uh, discovered so far and how, how it relates to these key components of SETI-K. So, the theory claims you are the SETI-K trust or the beneficiary of the deceased estate. The clerk of the court has appointed the judge administrator of the deceased estate. The judge is therefore the administrator of the deceased estate and the prosecutor is the executor of the deceased estate. 
and the judge seeks to swap roles with you, handing you executorship of the deceased estate and becoming the beneficiary of the deceased estate. He does this by having you claim to be the legal name, aka the executor of the deceased estate. Well, most of that has yet to be verified and proven, but certainly you are identifying yourself as the executor of a deceased estate when you acknowledge the legal name. As already said, that's, that's evidenced from the definition of name in Anderson's Dictionary of Law. So we still have a bit of work to do. But we now know what an administrator is, which I think many people didn't probably didn't know. We also know what an executor is and what a trustee is. Now, let's just have a quick recap, summation, of what we've gone through in this video. A legal name is a name that identifies a deceased estate in law, and those two points there are the evidence on which we rely for that determination. Using the legal name at law is to claim to be the representative for the name. In this instance, it is a claim to be an executor for the legal name that identifies a deceased estate. And I just want to note this, term, this word here, representative. When you're in court, you're representing the name. And one evidence of this is that uh, the judge will ask if you are representing yourself. Well, why would you need to represent yourself? I think when a judge says, are you representing yourself? The yourself part of that statement is in inverted commas, just like in his own name is in, in, in inverted commas. As we see here, in the definition of name, in Anderson's The Dictionary of Law. So, can a man represent himself? I don't believe he can. A man is. He is himself. I am that I am. So when they ask you, are you representing yourself? That has to be a pseudo-correct use of the term yourself. And we can see that they're not shy of using pseudo-terms from the use of inverted commas in reference to in his own name in Anderson's Dictionary of Law. So a man can't represent himself so when they're asking you if you are going to represent yourself, the yourself must mean something other than you. And I'm suggesting that other thing that it refers to is a deceased estate. I mean, in life, those things that require representation are those things that cannot speak for themselves. Children, the mentally insane, the dead, and corporations. All of them require representation because they have no voice of their own. But you do have a voice of your own. So if you're being asked if you will represent yourself, the yourself that they're referring to can't be the actual living you. It must be something else. Like a deceased estate. Like the legal name. So you're representing the legal name. Which is not you. Because if it was you, you wouldn't need to represent it. You would just be it. As you have not been appointed executor by a will or by letters of administration to the legal name deceased estate, the law sees you as an executor de tort. In law, 
a party deemed to be acting as executor de son tort is never told of their error and no reference is made in any written document identifying a party who acts as executor de son tort by that title or office. So the legal name identifies you as an executor and the law deems you to be an executor de son tort because you don't have a proper appointment. None of this will ever appear in writing. And we know that from the law dictionary the section of the law dictionary definition we just looked at, where it says he is denominated in the de he is not denominated in the declaration executor de son tort of his own wrong. Meaning he, you are not referred to as executor de son tort, even though that is what you are considered to be. So this is going to be crucial information for you to comprehend as we move forward. And there's a lot more I'd like to say, but I don't want to make the mistake I made in the first draft of this video that I uploaded, where I try and put too much information into one video. I think I'll just leave this with you now, let this settle on you, let you get your head around it, and then we'll come back and look at the next stage of uncovering the SETI-K issue. Okay, see you folks.